The runtime of a function, or often also referred as execution time, is defined by the invocation of the function until the function returns. In some cases also value, or sometimes not. If we measure those times, we have a metric on which we can rely on when we adapt our functions or algorithms to be more performant. We can then take the initial execution time of a function and compare it after we adapted the function to yeah, the optimized code. In this video, we will see three methods how we can measure this execution time in Kotlin. So enough of the talk, let's dive into the code. As an example, we have a very basic Kotlin project here with one single function, reverse the alphabet, which just builds up a list of A to Z and then reverse the list and returns it. I will show you now three methods how you can actually measure how long it takes to execute this function. And we start with the first one, measuring the elapsed time directly. For this case, we have actually three options. We can either measure the milliseconds, the nanoseconds, or if you're in a couple native project, also the microseconds. For a showcase, we will use the measure time millis. And here you can see we have a block as an argument. And if you go into the documentation, we can also see that. And the function, however, just measures the time it takes to execute this block here. So now we put this reverse the alphabet function inside. And as a result, we say a new variable and we call it elapsed time. And then we receive here the long value, which refers to the measured time in milliseconds. Now we just print it out and say um, elapsed time and can refer here to the variable. And now we execute the function. And now you can already see elapsed time 27 milliseconds. If you would do the same for measured time with nano time, then we can once again execute and receive the elapsed time in nanoseconds. However, there's a third option. We can also use measure time, which returns a so-called duration object. And with this duration class, we can use not one single type, not only milliseconds and one nanoseconds, but we have access to multiple values of this measurement. So we can here really say like in whole seconds, nanoseconds, minutes, milliseconds, and also microseconds, which is not available by the JVM, only in native Kotlin projects, if you use the measure um, time microseconds function. So let's use this here in uh, microseconds. And then we also have to opt into Kotlin time experimental time, because at the time of this video, this function is still experimental. So we just say opt in for experimental time. And as you can see here an add opt in got added. And now we can execute the function once again and receive the execution time or the runtime of the function in microseconds. So let's come to the second option. In this function, we get the reversed list as a result. But with this measured time, we only receive the duration. So what if we also want to get the result of this function and not only the measurement? In this case, we can use the measured time function. So type in a measured time value. And as a result, we get here a so-called time value. And this time value also needs a type. And in our case, it's a list of chars. Now, um, this elapsed time has uh, one value which refers to uh, the duration, which is once again the duration object we had in the first option at the end. And we also have now access to, let's quickly make this to print a new line. We also have now access to um, the value of uh, this time value. Um, and now if I execute the code once again, you can see that we, besides the measured time, receive the reversed list here. 
But somehow it seems a little bit unnecessary that we need to access this object here. What if we could declare the value and the measured time directly? That is actually no problem because we can use Kotlin's destructuring declaration. So instead of declaring here a time value, we delete that real quick, put this in parentheses, and now we say our reversed list and also the measured time which is also once again a duration now we can here access the worst list and here also the um, measured time directly when i once again execute the code you can see we received the same result for the third option we actually use time marks. You can think of time marks as point in times of your execution phase. So that enables us to not only measure the execution time as a whole, but maybe only specific time windows. So let's quickly rewrite this function. And we say here, we first build our list. And I have the alphabet here. And then we say a reverse alphabet where we access the alphabet and only call the s reverse function. And now at the end, we once again say return reverse alphabet. For using those time marks, we now use the so called time source. And this time source allows us to measure these time marks at the end. So here we say monotonic. Once again, we also need to opt in for the experimental time. And now we have actual access to this class here. And we say the first time mark is after, um, after the buildup of the alphabet. So we say time source and then mark now. So this creates a new value time mark. The next time mark we want to measure is after we reverse our list. And here we say reverse alphabet time mark. Let's quickly also end this with time mark. And now we have two time marks in the execution phase of this whole function. Um, if we now want to know what is the elapsed time between these two um, time marks, we can create a new variable and say elapsed time and say first the second time mark gets subtracted from the first time mark. And now you can see that here appears an error mark because before Kotlin 1.8 this was not possible but with kotlin 1.8 it's now possible to use the subtraction and because now all the time marks always are bound to their source time source so to fix this uh, we go to our build gradle and in my case i am at 1.7.21 of the kotlin version and now i just upgrade to 1.8.0 quickly sync and now if I go back, you can see that the error mark disappeared. Now I can use this object here, say print new line and say elapsed time from time marks. And once again, access the elapsed time here. And now we can access here once again, the in whole microseconds. And then we can delete all of that code. We only need to execute the function itself from now on. And let's execute the main function. And as a result, we have here now the measured time, not of the whole function block, but only between the um, time after building up the alphabet list and the actual call of the S reversed function. So as you saw, the third option is really only for advanced use cases where you need to fine grained measure uh, specific steps of your function. And yeah, in most cases, um, you're probably fine with the previous options. In my case, in most of the times, I use the measured time function where I can access the measured time with the duration class. And there I have all the options I need for yeah, comparing function adaptions for performance measuring and comparison of optimizations. So I hope you had some takeaways. Like the video 
subscribe to my YouTube channel, activate the notification bell and I hope to see you soon.